All right, g'day guys, welcome back to True Footy today. Gonna have a little crack at a, what I would describe as a pretty fun project, but one that's likely to draw a lot of criticism. Now, as you guys may be aware, we have done a redraft series in the past, sort of ranking the draft picks, you know, over various different drafts. You can find that somewhere in the back catalog of the channel. Today, I'm kind of doing a video in the similar sort of vein, but I'm combining the last three drafts and ranking the draft picks on who I think have been the best 15 draft picks over the last three years. So I guess another way of looking at this particular video would be if I had to put all of those players from the last three drafts into a single pool and I had 15 picks, this is the order I would take those players in. So using that logic, it's not so much a ranking of who's been the best player so far. There's also going to be a fair bit of potential ranked into this as well. Obviously, if you were just ranking on what they've achieved so far, the 2020 batch would barely even register. So I'm also sort of factoring in how good a player I think will become as well as what they've proven so far. Now, of course, I don't peg myself as an authority on this sort of issue. I never do with these sort of videos. So as a result, I'm sure I'm going to get things wrong but as always I welcome your constructive feedback in the comments as well at the end of the day I am just a footy fan so there is going to be some sort of conscious and unconscious biases I have towards players some players I've just seen more than others but this is just frankly my opinion who would I take in the first 15 picks if I had to redraft these players today doing this video I found pretty interesting it was quite telling how strong the 2018 draft was in particular. I think a lot of those players are going to feature very highly in this particular ranking. And today I'm going to go from pick 15 and work my way up to who I would take pick one if I redrafted these players. So without further ado, let's crack into the video. The 15th pick of my draft would be Taron Thomas from the North Melbourne Footy Club. A player I drew a little bit of criticism about uh, in my AFL 22 under 22 video for not including him in that team. And looking at the feedback from that video, I'm probably prepared to concede, probably just haven't watched enough of him to have made that informed decision. But the reason I'm putting him in here today is also because it's factoring in a lot of potential. From what I had seen, I'd prefer the output of Stevenson um, and guys like you know Adam Chera in terms of what they've proven at AFL level to date. Whereas this video is factoring on who would I draft. So it does factor in a lot more potential. And that's why I've got Taron Thomas ranked very, very highly based on that potential. He was of course drafted with pick eight in the 2018 draft and he's played 46 games for North Melbourne. Standing at about 189 centimeters, he's kind of like a midfielder forward with great versatility and a really eye-catching burst of speed. He's got all that you could possibly want in a high potential draft pick with his size, his speed, line breaking ability, his skill, his versatility, but this year he started to add some consistency of production as well. Best performance to date of his career was of course his four goal and 23 possession game against the Blues. And that's just a taste of what I think this guy can achieve. So I've got him as the 15th best pick out of the last three drafts. With pick 14, I would take Bailey Smith of the Western Bulldogs who was drafted with pick seven again back in 2018. And he's added 62 games in that time. He's an explosive inside outside midfielder, plays with real aggression. And he's quite a balanced style midfielder in that way too. Who. Averages about 23 possessions a game this year, if I'm not mistaken. He sort of plays as a, a lesser light in what is a star-studded Bulldogs midfield. Of course, he's more of a sort of ancillary sort of midfielder in that team, but with a bit more responsibility, I can see him being one of the game's very best midfielders in time. With pick 13, I've gone a little bit more potential versus what they've actually achieved on a footy field so far, and that's Hayden Young of the Fremantle Dockers. Young was drafted with pick seven back in the 2019 draft. Some considered him a worthy pick one that year, and he's only played 12 games out of the last two years on an AFL list. But with his skill set as a strong bodied intercepting defender, he's got an incredible kick. I can really see him being one of the best sort of general defenders in the competition one day. Again, I'm picking him more so on potential, but I'm just very, very confident that this guy is going to be an elite player. And he's, he's going to be one of those intercept sort of rebounding defenders that in the modern game is so important. And I think he will generally be one of Fremantle's best players one day. With pick 12, I am going to go with with a WO boy, Denver Granger Barras of the Hawthorne Footy Club, who was drafted with pick seven overall in last year's draft, and has just added five games in his first season. Now he's a tall, athletic, intercepting key defender, and as such will need some time to develop, and obviously hasn't had that much
much exposed form at AFL level just yet. But I think we've seen in his short time at AFL level that he's already impacting to an acceptable standard for a, you know, teenage key position prospect. As far as I can tell, he's probably the best key defender drafted over the last three seasons, and I can see him winning multiple All-Australians in his career. With pick 11, I am going to go with the South Australian Riley Philthorpe from the Adelaide Crows, who was drafted with pick two overall in last year's draft after the Bulldogs matched a bid for Jamara Ugelhagen. If you don't know him, he's kind of like a tall ruck forward, um, and as such, he's going to take a little longer to develop being in that role, but he's exceeded expectations in his first year, kicked five goals on debut, which has got to be a pretty rare feat these days, and looks to be one of the best key position talents in the game. It's really hard to judge a guy on potential. There's a couple of key position players in this list that I prefer ahead of him, but I have no doubt he's going to be a very good long-term player for Adelaide. Keeping with the South Australian theme, I'm going to take Jack Lukosius at pick 10 of the Gold Coast Suns, who was drafted at pick two back in that really strong 2018 draft, originally as an athletic key forward, but in his time at Gold Coast, he's kind of remodeled his game as a running, rebounding defender with that piercing right foot. With all the other young talent that gets talked about at the Gold Coast Suns, and rightfully so, I feel like Jack Lukosius might be a little bit understated. He's the number one meters gained player in the league this season and ranks third overall for marks. Again, it remains to be seen what his future best position is. Does he go back to being, you know, a key forward, maybe as a second or third tall forward? Or does he kind of continue this sort of trend of being the next Lockie Whitfield? Because I think he's got a massive amount of potential if he does stay in the back half on the field. Either way, I'm convinced he's going to be an absolute star wherever he plays. And as such goes pick 10 in this redraft. At pick nine, I'm going to take his teammate, Matthew. Matthew Rao of the Gold Coast Suns, who of course was the number one pick in the 2019 draft. He's a small, tough, hard running midfielder and ridiculously for a guy of his age, he's already shown an ability to absolutely tear teams up with his form, particularly the early parts of the 2020 season. Unfortunately for Rao, he's only played 16 games in his two seasons. He had two seasons cut in half by injury and at the moment he's probably playing like a player devoid of confidence and fitness and not really playing to his potential. But we do remember that in in his second, third, and fourth games at AFL level, he was BOG, won several Brownlow votes. I think he ended up with 10 Brownlow votes in that little period. And I think he's a very, very safe bet. He's going to be one of the better midfielders in the competition one day. With my pick eight of this draft, I'm going to go Logan McDonald of the Sydney Swans. Now, you will probably find a trend as we get towards the end of this draft. I'm starting to favor a little bit the really elite key position players because they're frankly a little bit more rare. And I think a Logan McDonald, therefore, is a little bit harder to replace than a Matthew Rao, certainly if they both hit their potential. But McDonald was drafted with pick four in 2020 draft and has managed seven games in his debut season. So his draft year was pretty compromised by COVID, but he did play Waffle Seniors and came second in the Bernie Naylor medal, which is the leading goal kicker award. Started his AFL career with a bang kicking seven goals in his first three games, but he's kind of quieted down and has found himself on the outside of that team, which is going pretty well at the moment. Key forward talents like McDonald are pretty rare, and I think he's one of the more exciting young key forward talents in the game. Obviously rating him pretty highly on potential there, but that is where I would take him if I had to do this draft. Pick seven, I am going with Fremantle's Caleb Sarong. Is there a little bit of recency bias because of his amazing derby last weekend? Perhaps, but this guy's won a Rising Star Award and added 35 games since being pick eight in the 2019 draft. Now you could probably argue that Sarong is a little bit lucky that Rao went down with injury because Rao probably would have won that Rising Star Award. Either way though, I think Sarong has proven he's already a pretty good AFL midfielder in a team where he probably doesn't have a lot of midfield support. A lot of the other Fremantle midfielders are also young. He's backed up his rising star year with a solid season this year, averaging 22 disposals, four and a half clearances a game. And his career best game was, of course, in the Derby last weekend, where he had 31 touches and probably goal of the year. He's a strong body, tough, relatively short clearance midfielder, and he's probably the ideal replacement for Lockie Neal that Fremantle could have found. With pick six, I am taking Zach Butters of the Port Adelaide football club, one of my absolute favorite players to watch in the game, drafted with pick 12 in that 2018 national draft. Now, despite being just 20 years of age, he's become one of Port Adelaide's most damaging players in my eyes, and that's a team that's more or less competed for a flag over the last two seasons, including this year. Unfortunately, his season's kind of been ruined by injury this year. He's managed just nine games, but in my eyes, he's the best young talent on Port Adelaide's list. We're down to the top five now, and this is where I start to go real key position heavy. I'm going to go with Melbourne's Luke Jackson, who was pick three in the 2019 draft 
and has added 26 games, which is pretty good effort for a raw athletic ruck prospect. Rucks traditionally need time to develop because they need to get their bodies up to AFL standard. Playing in the ruck is a pretty grueling sort of position, but I think he's pr impacted pretty well considering, and it's in a team that is, you know, right in the mix for the Premiership hunt this year. He's a really super athletic ruck, a little bit on the short side, but more than makes up for that with his vertical leap. He's a strong mark, and he's also quite aggressive with his second efforts and follow-up groundwork as well. Without checking the odds, I'd be comfortable in saying Luke Jackson is the current favourite for the Rising Star Award, and he's playing second fiddle to Max Gorn in that ruck, and he's having a terrific season. Personally, I think it's quite conceivable that Luke Jackson is the best ruck in the game within five to seven years. At pick four, I'm going to take the 2020 number one pick in Jamara Oogle Hagen of the Western Bulldogs. He's, of course, only played five games this year. Despite all the hype around him, you know, when's he gonna get a game? He's managed just five and probably hasn't impacted in the way some people had hoped. But again, he's a key forward talent at 195 centimeters. He's gonna take time to develop, but his ceiling as a key forward is just about as high as it gets. He's probably the most admirable comparison to Buddy Franklin we've had drafted since 2004. He's incredibly hard to stop in the forward 50 when he gets going, particularly at junior level, but he's already had, you know, at least one bag of five in the VFL, perhaps a second if I'm not mistaken. He's incredible in the air. He's one touch. He's good at ground level, incredibly athletic and he can burn off his opponents as well with his speed. For me, he goes top five purely on his incredible potential. With pick three in this redraft, I'm favoring a little bit more the proven players and I'm going to go Max King of the St Kilda Footy Club who was drafted with pick four in the 2018 draft. Now he missed his first season at the Saints at AFL level due to an ACL injury he'd copped in his junior year but he still battled hard and played 38 games in that time since then. He kicked 22 goals in his debut season and he currently sits on 38 with a round to play in 2021. At 202 centimeters he's an exceptionally tall forward. He's got long arms in addition to that and a massive leap on him as well and he marks at the highest point so in terms of you know contested marking and a defender shutting him down he's pretty much as tough an opponent as you can get his breakout performance at AFL level was undoubtedly his sixth goal performance against the Eagles in Perth this year he's been the main man for the Saints forward line this year and he's only really scratched the surface of his potential so when he fills out I could see this guy being a monster of the competition with pick two overall in this redraft, I'm going with Max's twin brother, Ben King of the Gold Coast Suns. He was drafted with pick six in the 2018 draft and has played 52 games for Gold Coast. He's been massive this year as Gold Coast's main focal point in attack, kicking 43 goals. And there was a point there where he was genuinely, I think third or fourth in the common medal. Being Max's twin, he's got a lot of the similar traits that I alluded to. He's super athletic as a key forward. And when he fills out, he's going to be very, very difficult to stop for defenders. It's pretty hard to separate he and his twin brother, Max, but I'll probably just give the edge to Ben given he's kicked more goals in a worse side and he probably doesn't have the same issues in terms of kicking accurately at goal. He's kicked 43 goals and 24 behinds this year. You'd be pretty bloody happy with either of them though. I just give Ben the slight edge. With pick one in this redraft, this may not surprise you, but I'm going to pick Sam Walsh of the Carlton Footy Club, who was pick one in the 2018 draft, one of the strongest drafts of recent times, and he's proven to have been a great number one pick, and he's played 60 games out of a possible 60 for Carlton since that time. He was a clear rising star winner in his first season, arguably one of the most dominant rising stars we've seen, averaging 25 disposals, and this season, he's hit back again with 30 possessions a game, five clearances, and he's probably emerged as Carlton's outright best player. He's a strong candidate for the All-Australian midfield this year, which is a massive achievement for a third-year player. He's potentially going to land close to a top five Brownlow finish. What sets apart Sam Walsh from any other player on this list is that he is pretty much already an elite AFL footballer, and as such, he gets rated as pick one in this redraft. There you have it, guys. That is my list of 15 that I would take in the redraft. There's a number of names that I wanted to include, but just quite couldn't. Connor Rose Z is an obvious one, but when I compare their actual output, I think he's a little bit more hype than substance, but to be honest, he's still going to be a fantastic player. Don't get triggered by that. This is a very, very elite list. His teammate Xavier Dersma, Tom Green, I think Nick Cox could emerge into this chat as well. Cozzy Pickett's a superstar talent, but being a small forward, kind of value that position a little bit less when we're talking about a redraft. Also a huge fan of Mitch Georgiatis, Lockie Ash, 
Will Day, and there's heaps of players that I've overlooked in that as well. Let me know in the comments who you think I've missed out and what you would do differently with your order. Again, like I said, I'm trying to pick on potential as well, which is largely impossible, but this is just the way I see it. Hope you enjoyed this list, guys. If you're enjoying the content, I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel, help us get closer to 15,000 by the end of the final series. That would be fantastic. I'm really excited for this final series. We'll be back just about with a weekly live stream. I hope that is certainly my intention, but you know, just the tips, true footy podcasts, season reviews, all that stuff is going to be coming thick and fast. Before you go, if you do have time, go check out our sponsors of today's video, manscaped.com. They have awesome little products like a, the Lawnmower 4.0 and this ball deodorant that I just whipped up there for you. They've done a great job of supporting the channel over this year and they genuinely have good products that I would genuinely recommend because I use them myself. You can get 20% off and free shipping on their products if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word, if you go to manscaped.com and purchase something. Thanks for watching, guys. Look forward to hearing from you and see you in the next video. Cheers.